Hello, welcome to the fifth episode, episode. of Enoch, <laughs> the, saga. the saga, the continuing saga of Enoch. And what, what, what I figured out this week is as we go through uh, Enoch here, uh, by the time we get through the introduction, you'll be able to read the book of Enoch and it'll absolutely make sense. So that's kind of what I've come up with. But anyway, uh, got a good class tonight. Uh, some very interesting stuff. So um, let's get rolling. Root of the universe and master of all masters, father of mercy and forgiveness, we thank you, our God and the God of our fathers, by bowing down and kneeling, that you brought us closer to your Torah and your holy work, and that you enable us to take part in the secrets of your holy Torah. How worthy are we that you grant us such a big favor? That is the reason we plead before you that you will forgive and acquit all of our sins, and they should not bring separation between you and us. And may it be your will before you, our God and the God of our fathers, that you will awaken, prepare our hearts to love and revere you. And may you listen to our utterances and open our closed heart to the hidden studies of your Torah. And may our study be pleasant before your place of honor as a realm of sweet incense. And may you emanate to us light from the source of our soul to all of our being. And may the sparks of your holy servants through which you revealed your wisdom to the world shine. And may their merit and the merit of their fathers and the merit of their Torah and holiness support us so we shall not stumble through our study. And, and by their merit, enlighten our eyes in our learning as stated by King David, the sweet singer of Israel. Open my eyes so that I will see the wonders from your Torah, because from his mouth God gives wisdom and understanding. May the utterance of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart find favor before you, God, my strength, and my Redeemer. Amen. So, one of the things that actually Russell brought to my attention uh, this week is uh, the, book of en the book of Enoch is uh, illustrated, narrated by Rabbi Ishmael. Okay, so there is uh, there is at at some point, which is going to be today, that we need to discuss a little bit about who's Rabbi Ishmael. What's what's the big deal? Why him? All right. Um, uh, a while back, when we were we were studying in in Brokos, uh, seven. I will. Uh, I, have to, I brought it, so I will uh, read the piece, <clears throat> and it says Rabbi Ishmael ben Elisha. This is this is in uh, Brokos seven a one. If you have it at home, it is book number one of the Talmud. One time on Yom Kippur, I entered inside the Holy of Holies to burn incense, and saw Akriel Yah Hashem Sivaot sitting high and lofty on a throne. Now we know the whole, that's whole formula for Metatron, Enoch, the Siva O deal, which is in uh, Hagiga, I believe. Sitting high and lofty on a throne, and he said to me, Rabbi Ishmael's son, bless me. And he said to him, may it be your will that your mercy conquer your anger and that your mercy overcome your sterner attributes and that you behave toward your children with the attribute of mercy and that for their sake you go beyond the boundary of judgment. And upon concluding this blessing, he nodded to me with his head to demonstrate his approval. And we have gone through that in past classes and broke it down and told you what's going on. So he's having a, a direct experience with uh, Metatron at, at this time. So uh, the, this, the entire Talmud, and we're going to even learn today, the Mishnah, the Mishnah is part of Perkyavos, is uh, always talking about this uh, Mirkava, the, the, the chariot. Even Ezekiel is talking about the chariot. All these guys in Torah understood the workings of the chariot. And we're going to have to talk a little bit about the workings of the chariot today because the workings of the chariot is Metatron. That's, that's how it works, all right? It, it's what it rides on so to speak. So if you have a Tanakh, if you will open to Isaiah chapter 6, you will, you will see, you will see almost the exact same language written here by Isaiah. Why? Because Isaiah knows the system. He knows the, the workings of the chariot, the Masa Merkava. It says in chapter 6 in Isaiah, verse 1, 
in the year of King Uzziah's death, I saw Hamiyah sitting upon a high and lofty throne, and its legs filled the temple. See, see the verbiage there? Seraphim were standing above at his service. Each one had six wings, with two covering its face, with two covering its legs, and with two it would fly. And one would call out to another, Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh is Hashem, Tzivahot, right there. The whole world is filled of kavod, glory. So the, all of these men that, that are in this entire book understand what the Masa Merkava is. So we're going to have to get into today what that is. How does this system work? How do you enter into this, we're going to call it interface communication with the one that spoke the world into creation? That's what we're all after. So in doing this, we need to learn a little bit about Rabbi Ishmael, thanks to Russell. <laughs> Just because Russell wants to know. Because Russell wants to know. But it, <laughs> it, 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 it was a good point. It's very pertinent because the book of Enoch is Rabbi Ishmael escorted in through the Atzilut. So Rabbi Ishmael, he, he is a third generation Tana. So the, the Tanin uh, are the first, the, 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 the original writers of the Talmud um, are going to be the men of the great assembly, which is going to be Daniel, Nehemiah, Ezra, Mordecai, all these prophets, because they foresaw the destruction of the second temple and they had to codify all the secrets and how you do Torah, not what Torah says, but how do you do what it says in the Talmud with every little intricacy that might happen. So uh, the, the Tanim are the first century sages that, that started codifying all of this, all this stuff. This is the first century before the common era. And, they, and the Tanim go into the second century. So at year 135 was when Rabbi Akiva and the martyrs happened, all right? So I'll give you a little timeline there. The Mishnah, everything in the Mishnah is from the Tana. They wrote the Mishnah, Perkyavos, stuff like that, okay? So this is, this is, uh, if, if you use the Roman calendar, all right, this is prior to Yeshu, prior to the whole Jesus thing. This is prior to that. Now, after, after the destruction of the temple, we have, so we have a Rabbi Ishmael, and then we're going to have another Rabbi Ishmael, all right? Kohen Gadol. So, uh, the other the other Rabbi Ishmael ben Elisha Cohen Gadol. The rabbis do not teach history for history's sake. All right. They teach the history only to pass the code down. All right. So the one Ambrokos is one of, that I just read was one of the uh, uh, rabbis that was martyred with Rabbi Akiva. All right? And the other Rabbi Ishmael, Ben Elisha, was his descendant. Okay? Ishmael's descendant or the descendant of the... Uh, Ishmael's descendant. So we'll say his, it's like his grand, grandson because he's third generation. Okay? The first rab, so you're going to see in Talmud, it's going to say Rabbi Elisha, ben, ben, uh, Rabbi uh, Ishmael ben Elisha, and, and that, that's going to be one that's uh, with Akiva, if they're, if they're talking with Akiva, and then there's going to be another one that is uh, this one here, all right? So, but guess what? It's, it's 
greater Metatron, lesser Metatron. It's, it's all using the code of who they are and what they're doing. So, uh, Rabbi, uh, the, the Rabbi Ishmael, that was one of the 10 mortars with the colleague of Rabbi Kiva, he was, a, uh, he was also one of the disciples of Rebbe Mayer. Okay. Our, our favorite guy, Rebbe Mayer. <clears throat> Rabbi Yohashua taught that Rabbi Ishmael ben Elisha Cohen Gadol was a Talmud of the great uh, Rebbe Eleazar the Great. When he was a young child at the destruction of the, of the second temple, he was taken by the Romans. All right, so he was kidnapped. And when he was taken, Rabbi Yehoshua searched high and low for him and found him incarcerated by the Romans. And he asked him a question. And the question he asked him, if you have your Tanakh, turn to Isaiah 42, 24. The question he asked him is in Isaiah 42, 24. It says, who delivered Jacob to plunder and Israel to looters? Because he had just been taken by the Romans. So he asked him, who delivered Jacob to plunder and Israel to the looters? So what do you think his answer was? Was it not Hashem? He, uh, he against whom we have sinned, did they not wish to go in his ways and did not listen to his Torah? He finished the verse. So, Rabbi Yehoshua says, oh, that's my boy right there. All right? So, because only a, 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 a Talmud would know such things. They have eidetic memories. They have the entire Torah memorized. He could have asked him anything, but he asked him, some, he asked him something specific in relation to what had happened to him. See what I'm saying? So, he, you know, most people say, well, it's the Romans that came and got me. Who, who do you think it was? Right? But because they did not listen to Torah, they were taken. So, Rabbi Yehoshua said, I am certain he will be a teacher in Israel. And he paid a very high ransom for him. Both of them lived during the time of Rabbi Akiva. Both Rabbi Ishmael's lived during the time of Akiva. Uh, they overlap. The times overlap. Every time his mother went to a mikvah, she encountered an animal, behemoth. Every time she saw an animal, she would leave because animal is guru, right? It's a beast. Until Hashem intervened and sent Metatron to her and she encountered him. When she encountered him, she imprinted that image into her mind and thus gave birth to Rabbi Ishmael. Who is Rabbi Ishmael? Lesser Metatron. You see? See the thing? How it works? So Rabbi Ishmael enters into the Holy Holies because there's a huge Machloket. He was only 13 at the time. There was no temple. How could he enter into, at 13, how can you be the Kohen Gadol? How can you enter into something that's been destroyed? Not when you know the workings of the Merkava. You can enter, he could enter it whenever he wanted. He could enter it there. Yes. He didn't have to enter it here. The, 
It doesn't say which temple. You follow me? That's the key. So, uh, he is Kohen Gadol. Who is Kohen Gadol? Metatron. Now, there is a piece in Avodah Zorah where it says, even an Akum who delves into Torah is equal to a Kohen Gadol. And man, you want to get a fight started? You tell a Jew that. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Oh, it doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that. What is it trying to tell you? If you are an Akum, if you are an idolater, and you delve into Torah, A, you will no longer be an idolater. Mm -hmm. You will become your own lesser Metatron of your own space. It doesn't mean the Kohen Gadol. It means a Kohen Gadol. Okay? So the verbiage is real. You have to know the Masamir Kava the workings of the chariot. Didn't it say like? Like, yes, like, no, equal no. to, yeah. you know? It, there's this huge thing. What does it say? Is it is he the Kohen Gadol? Is he like a Kohen Gadol? Is he equal to, da, 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 da. Of course, Reddy Mayer comes in and explains it, you know, right after that. You know, there's the ones that are commanded in due, and then the ones that are not commanded in due. The ones that are commanded in due, they have a reward that is this. The ones that are not commanded in due, they have a reward that is that. You know, he he clears it up, but nobody keeps reading on that. You know, Be, because he's letting you know one is lesser, one is greater. He's showing you the formula. So, um, now, Metatron is mentioned. Uh, um and Rabbi Elisha is mentioned 70 times in the Mishnah. 70 times in the Haggadah and 70 times in the Halakha. How many names does Metatron have? 70. Went back to Enoch. So We've kind of got Rabbi Ishmael mapped out now. We know he's not what we think he is. He's something else. Both of them. Doesn't matter, right? It, it, it's moot now. You know, if it was the first one, it was the second one, it doesn't matter. They are the, they are the same thing. Hold in, Brandon. When the Holy One took him, the sages say, Enoch was the beginning of the tzaddikim. He was the first tzaddik. What are they saying? He's just sowed Adam. Why? Because the other ones are building the part suf. We had Keter, Hokma, Bina, you know, Das. You, you had to go all the way down. And now you're getting to Yisod. And who is the who is the Terat HaYisod? Noah. That's the ark, right? So you have Lamech and, and Methuselah, and that's Ak and Hod. Is that the 10 generations? Yes, 10 generations, the 10 for road. But Enoch was the first Sadiq. He's Sadiq Yisod Olam. He's minister of the worlds, right? That is why he is different than everybody else. The Holy One said, the whole generation is wicked. When he took him, he made for him a throne of fire, like his throne. Remember the thing we studied on Rabbi Akiva last time that said, how many thrones are there? He says, two. He goes, oh, it's really, and you know, you have to go through it. And, oh, it's really one, but, but there's two, upper and lower, but it's only the extension of that one. You can't say there's two, but who is it? What is, what, so now we have a huge caution. What the heck is going on? All right. He made him a throne just like his throne and he called him yud heh vav -Heh. 
So yud heh vav -He is calling him yud heh vav -He, and yud heh vav -He has a throne, and he has a throne, and it's the same throne, and his name is the same as his name. What's happening? You see, if God, God has to pull himself through himself, so he has to put part of himself on the other side of himself, which is impossible, so how does he have to do it? Through Enoch. And through all that that whole dispensation but then he has to bring it back this is how yud heh vav -Heh got on the other side of himself from a recon peen to zeron peen and it iterates upon itself that's why there's a huge caution remember we, we read in daniel and Daniel said, and there were thrones. And, and everybody freaks out. Oh, boy, you mean there's thrones? Well, as Christians say, oh, well, Jesus is sitting on the throne, too, you know. Everybody else. Those for Jesus. So um, Hashem took him. And every day he would sit on the throne and he would write merits, the merits of Israel. So we have a huge caution now. If if one was Israel even here? No. If Enoch is translated to Metatron and Metatron's sitting on the throne writing the merits of Israel and Israel hasn't even happened yet, Israel is eternal. Always has been, always will be. All right? But I thought it was yud heh vav -Heh that wrote the merits of Israel. It is yud heh vav -Heh. Metatron. Then Hashem placed under the rule of Metatron 70 malachim that rule the nations, one for each nation. All of the celestial family above and below. So who is the head of all, all the Partsufim? Metatron. yud heh vav -Heh. He has more Hokma and Bina, wisdom and understanding, and he is greater than all the ministering angels. One Mishnah says, Enoch was wicked. We studied that piece last week, right? And one said, it was the people. So you have one mission of saying Enoch was wicked, and you have another mission that says, oh, it was the people that were wicked. We have a story called the children of Israel in the desert and the golden calf, where it was the people that was doing all the wicked stuff, but Israel was considered wicked. You see the fractalization of that thing? So we... We resolved that kasha last week because Enoch is the whole world. It depends on which aspect you're looking at, right? Hashem saw that they would be wicked. Hashem gave Metatron the keys to heaven. So now we have to add to our list. Enoch has the keys to heaven. Enoch slash Metatron. And he turned his flesh into fire and his bones into coals of fire. His appearance was like lightning. The light of his eyes, even his eyelashes, were the fire of the sun, S-U-N. And his face of the kavod of the throne his face, his panim, is the glory of the throne. So Metatron is the throne. You see. It's, it's, it's holographic. Because the kise, kise kavod, the throne, 
hold the glory of the throne, Kisei is female, and Kavod is male. But Kavod also can mean union. So this is the union. When he is sitting in Torah, it's union. So what happens with the four that enter the Pardes in Hagiga? Acher, Benabuya, sees him sitting on the throne. And he says, what are you doing sitting on the throne? There must be two gods. No. And it says that he received 60 lashes of fire. Is he not already fire? What happens? The klipa he put on him, the fire burns it off. There is no klipa there. Why is he sitting on a throne? Because it's in union. All of that is in union. Because that is how Hashem sits in Bia. Through the aspect of Metatron. Remember, Metatron is not a thing. It's an interface. He called his name yud heh vav -Hey Jr. Literally. In some places, it is written Adonai, the lesser. So what happens during the Shema? The Yud goes down and picks up the Aleph all the way down. And then, so it starts with the Yud and ends with the Yud. Adonai's last letter is the Yud. From Yud to Yud. This is going to become very important in a minute when we get into the Talmud. All right? So it's a little formula. You start with the Yud, you end with the Yud. Because the Yud is yud heh vav -Hey. He was originally called Shaddai because Shaddai is Gematria 314. Afterwards, he was called Havaya, Hashem, known as Zeron Pim, the lesser, right? So what does it say? The Torah says when, when, when uh, Hashem is speaking to Moses, he says, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I appeared as Shaddai. But to you, I'm appearing as Hashem. What did he just say? I appeared to Metatron to them, and guess what? I'm going to appear to Metatron to you. All right? Now, Jared, we know is his father, Enoch, means to descend. During his time, the Malachim uh, descended to teach mankind. As it says, Enoch walked, I mean Noah, as it says, Noah, Noah walked with Elohim. For it is known, Elohim is the name for Malachim. Because Elohim is singular when it's talking about Elohim, Bina, right? But Elohim can be plural when it's talking about Malachim. So Enoch walked 300 years with the Malachim into the Gan and learned from them Zodiac, Astronomy, the Seven Wisdoms. And Enoch became disgusted with the ways of man. It just said that Hashem became disgusted with the ways of man. So Enoch was the one that said Baruch Shem Kavod. Bless the glory of his name. He was the sower of shoes, and every time he would make a stitch, he would say Baruch Shem Kavod. Who was the first person in Torah to say Baruch Hashem? Yeah. It's the same thing. Could you, huh? Russell? Jethro. Jethro. We got a formula going here. Moses is the greater. Jethro is the lesser. Hmm. He's a shoe cobblist. He's a shoe cobblist. 
That's why we have stitches in our shoes. What's he doing? He's sewing up the fabric of the fall. He's stitching it together. Y'all remember that big thing I made that time with the fish string and you pulled one string and the and the whole all the paper came back together? I still have that somewhere. Yeah, but you do. <laughs> one of your boxes. One of my boxes. Metatron is the shoe and Elijah is the soul. The Mishnah and Perkyavo says that Moses received the Torah from Sinai. Who did he receive it from? Metatron. So now, let's turn briefly into Hagiga. Turn with me to 11A4. Hagiga is book number 22, if you have it at home. 22? Yeah, book number 22. We're going to Hagiga 11A4. And we're, we're going to pick up on a theme that they're discussing in the previous chapter but we're going to take it to the chapter where we want to go to. That's going to be Metatron, right? So the Mishnah continues and it says, the laws of illicit sexual relations have real scriptural support. So there's, there's this big mock look at there's, uh, does, does, does this have, does this have real scriptural support? Does that have real scriptural support? Some say, yeah, this does. Yeah, this doesn't. But they get down to illicit sexual relations and they say, this is explicit. Okay. So turn the page. And for the law, such as per, 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 prohibits of incest with his daughter, who is the offspring of a rape victim, which is not written explicitly in Torah, for Rava said to Rav Yitzhak Bar Avidimi, told me it is derived from the Gezerah Shava, the words um, Chain, Chain, Chena, Chena, which means yes, yes. So we're going to take those two words and we're going to keep them in our brain because we're fixing to see what's going on. Now, to the, to the Mishnah that we are going to study, is in 11b2. So let's. So we, we, we have a couple themes that are running in, in, in the book here. We have illicit, illicit sexual relations, right? And we have this term, hain hain, which basically means yes, yes, okay? So here's what it says in the Mishnah. The laws of forbidden unions may not be expounded on among three people. Nor may Masa Breshis be expounded on between two people. Nor Masa Merkava may be expounded on even by one person. Okay? So if you read the Mishnah, it's going to tell you you cannot expound on sexual, illicit sexual relations among three people. You may not teach the workings, the masa, the workings of Genesis to two people, with even two people. And you may not teach the workings of masa Merkava to even one person. Yet, what is that we do in here? We do all three, okay? So we have to figure out what are they saying because it makes a big difference. Because if you just read the basic text in the Peshat and somebody finds out I'm teaching Masa Breshis, the workings of creation in the Histal Shalut, they're gonna say, oh, you can't learn from that guy. It's clearly in the Talmud, you can't teach that to, to more than three people at a time. Oh, he's teaching about Metatron and entering the Pardes and, and meditation. and You can't do that, not even to one person. If you only know the Peshat. But here's what it says. 
unless that person is a scholar who can arrive at an understanding. But if you will look in the Hebrew, it's, it's, uh, it says, Hokma Mavim Mida'ato. It doesn't, the translation in, in English does not mean one who arrives at understanding because the Hebrew says, Hokma, wisdom. Mavin is Bina, understanding. Mida'ato is knowledge. Unless you have wisdom, understanding, and knowledge, that's the exception. They just told us the formula of how to do it. They have coded in what not to do exactly how to do the genius of the Talmudic mind. It's right there in front of them. Okay? And if, if you have the Talmud, you will see it is endless notes on these. Endless. So our, back to our question. What does forbidden unions have to do with anything? Illicit sexual unions. What does forbidden unions have to do with anything? Especially Masa Merkaba, which is Kabbalah. If you want to know what Kabbalah is, it's Masa Merkaba, the working of the chariot. Which is Halakha. What are they trying to tell us? With also using Masa Breshis the workings of creation and union. Because the secret of unions is Zivug. That's the name of the game, part Suf. You have to have Hug. You have to have Hasidim and Guvarot. You have to have male and female. You have to have wisdom and, uh, wisdom and understanding to even get knowledge, right? The whole thing is about the quest of knowledge and how, who is God? How does God work? You know, how do we answer those that don't know? Well, you have to have Hokma Bina Das. If you have Hokma Bina Das and that other person wants to know, then they are going to have, have to have Hokma Bina Das too. Masa Breshis is about the Tohu. Understanding the Tohu. And Masa Merkava is the Tikkun. Breshis, Masa Breshis, the working of creation, is how the Guvarot aspect got here. And the Masa Merkava is the Hasadim aspect. They are giving us the formula in the Mishnah. The Ramak is of the Tohu. Ramak Kabbalah is the Tohu. Arizal Kabbalah is the Tikkun. If you want to learn the, all the to Tohu, Ramak. If you want to learn all the Tikkun, Arizal. Masa Breshi, Masa Merkava. Unity, symmetry is the secret of Torah. Because Da'at is forbidden union. Hokma is Merkava. And Ima, wisdom, I mean understanding, is Breshi. They are letting you know unions happen in Da'at, which is well known, right? The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Don't get your peanut butter in my chocolate. Or don't get your chocolate in my peanut butter. The Marhu says, is it three? Is it two? Is it one? Which one is it? You can't do this for three. You can't do this for two. You can't do this for one. Well, if you add the teacher, if you have one, you already have two, so you can't do any of it. Because if you add the teacher to the three, you got four. The Zohar says, not 
revealing secrets to those who are not fitting. Revealing Torah as if it was naked. Where do we know that term from? And Ham exposed the nakedness of his father. And no, and Adam and Hava were naked in the gone. So the word used over there of explicit sexual relations is the same word, naked. If any goes in and do not come out of this study, of this knowledge, it would be better if he was not even created. So if you go in to study Masa Merkava and you don't know the system, which is what the Messianics do, the Torah says it's better you not, were not even created because you're bringing Klepe in. That is known as an illicit sexual union. That's what it's talking about. Because that's what happened with Enoch 1 and Enoch 2. They went into Masa Merkava and put Jesus in it. Mm -hmm. It would be better they were never created. The intention is not it as appears. For only Rabbi Yochai would know and understand the matter. However, if this was the case, you would not ever find anyone to teach. So how does it work? Even if he has a question that confounds him, as long as that person says in his heart, I am empty of the truth, and he reveals the lack to himself, it is not the information. A person like that, it's a mitzvah to teach him. So, you, you don't tell somebody who, if it, it goes back to this, if they don't ask the question, they're not ready for the answer. See what I mean? So if you're going to learn true wisdom, true understanding and true knowledge, you have to tell yourself, I don't know anything. I literally don't know anything. And the more you learn Torah and the more you study this, the more you realize you don't know anything. Like Brandon and I, when we did martial arts, and you know, when we were white belts, after the first year, we thought we could kill Godzilla, <laughs> right? Ten years later, you know, black belts and everything, we realized we still don't know anything, you know? My gosh, that's the secret of Torah. Because if he does not do this, he is not fitting to stand in the place and the palace of the king. He does not have the ability because he has heretical ideas. Why? Because he thinks he knows so much. This is the Arizal. This is Zohar. It looks absurd to him. When, when people that don't understand Masa Merkava, when they look into it, it looks absurd. When they read the Talmud, it looks absurd. He can't see because it's absurd. In understanding, and it is okay to have doubts and questions, but it is not okay to make up your own answers and your own assumptions. The Sefer Bahir says, the one who studies Masa Breshis, it is not possible for him not to stumble. It's difficult. The workings of creation are difficult. You know, I pose this question to people all the time. God created Adam in his image and his likeness. Why do you think God is, Adam is a man? Does God have an image? If, if that doesn't stump you right there, your entire premise of the Bible is already off. A person cannot succeed unless he falls and trips. You're not going to know. You're going to have questions. 
It's not going to make sense. But you got to get up, dust yourself off, keep digging and studying, right? And you can't make up your own assumptions or your own hypotheses of what it is. It's in there. They know exactly what it is. The, the person that does this will merit a path of life and is loved by Hashem. As Psalm says, his banner is on me and it is love. The Mishnah is not what it appears to be, limiting the ones who should learn or who can learn. Because from the negative, you always assume the positive. You keep those out, but you bring the other ones in. It is telling you how to do and what to do. It's not telling you don't do. One of the ways keeps the heretic out. The other makes a new tzaddik. This is teaching, education. Education is the name Enoch, Metatron. The Zohar says the Evid Metatron contains all the names and codes, all the descriptions, the merciful, the good, the slow to anger, all the permutations of the Havaya, and in him are all the spherotes, and they are interwoven into each other. He rides upon them all, Mirkava, chariot. He rides upon them. <clears throat> the side of bad, as in Mishnah Hagia, you can't teach forbidden relations to, excuse me, to others. Who are these people that cause the forbidden relation? Who caused it in the garden? The not aspect of the Nakash. What are the aspects of the Nakash? Sam and Lil. So, who are they? These are Samael and the Nakash. Why does it say we have a huge Kasha? I thought Samael was the Nakash. Who's the Nakash? Lil. Lil is Hava's friend. She's talking about Guva Road attracted to Guva Road. But the Sam and the and the Zuhama is already in her. So when these two become buddies, Adam is now contaminated. That's a big curveball. Where do you think the whole LGBT thing gets its start from, from the Aquarine. Because it cannot be with three. What are these three? These are the three Klepa, as is known. Because it has right, left, middle in it, just like the Kedusha does. And you can't allow the Hitsonin in. So you don't teach the Klepa. That is called the three. They have a right, left, center. You have to keep Sam and the Nakash separate. You cannot let them have illicit union. You cannot feed them light. You do not give them a middle. Three. No da'at. If they have no da'at, it's sterile. Therefore, it's coming for itself. It's not the people, but the construct. Not to bring in the mirkava to them. Therefore, it says in the Mishnah, you cannot expound on three. But on Masa Breshit, it's the opposite. You can't do it with two. In, in order not to make a separation, 
and only with one because you cannot have duality. You can't do it with two. You cannot have duality. You cannot teach Masa Breshif if somebody has a dual aspect of reality. God is here and we are there. You're done. I cannot, you're never going to get it. You can't do it with two. And the Mirkava, Masa Mirkava, not even with one, unless he's a Hakam. The Holy One is in union with the Shekhinah, and the Holy One is Mitla Beish, overlapping in Bia through Metatron. And this is called Masa Mirkava. That is the secret of the entire Shekhinah. So, turn to Hagiga. You're already there. And go to 14. B. 1. Fourteen B one. The Gemara returns to the law recorded in our Mishnah that one may not expound upon Masa Mirkava except to a qualified individual. The Gemara cites a brasa that relates the story that is relevant to this law. The rabbis taught in a brasa and and. An uh, incident occurred with, Ram, with Rabban Yochanan ben Zakkai, who was riding on a donkey and going along the road. What's the, what's the, what's the, what's the secret of a donkey? Kuvarot. What's a tzaddik? Hasidim. What's happening? Union. The dance. The dance. Well, uh, Rabbi Elazar ben Arak was walking behind, guiding the donkey forward. Just, just go 4D and listen to the story, and it all makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. Rabbi Elazar ben Arak said to Rabban Yochanai ben Zakkai, My teacher, he's wanting education. My teacher. Teach me one chapter of Masa Merkava. Ram, Ram, Rabban replied to him, I cannot do that. I have not taught you regarding this, nor may I expound, nor, nor may one expound Masa Merkava in class of one student. Unless that student was a scholar who could arrive at an understanding of his own is uh, the issues on his own. But remember, we already told y'all that that was unless he has Hokma Bina Das and has realized he doesn't know anything. Once he says, I don't know anything, teach me, that's your that's it's telling us when to and how to. My teacher, allow me then to recite before you one matter that, that you have already taught me. So Rabban, uh, Yochanan ben Zakkai, said to him, speak. Immediately, Rabban, Yochanan ben Zakkai, descended from the donkey, wrapped himself in a garment, set up a stone under an olive tree. Malchut Yesod, stone, olive tree, well known in Kabbalah, right? What's he doing? They are, he is teaching him the Masa Mir Kabbalah. Rabbi Elazar ben Arak said to him, My teacher, why did you descend from the donkey? He said, it, Is it conceivable that you will expound upon Masa Mir Kabbalah? And the divine presence shall be with us, and ministering angels shall accompany us. 
and I would be riding on a donkey? Immediately, Rabbi Ben, Rabbi Elazar Ben Arach began his discourse on Masa Merkava and expounded. And surrounding all the trees in the field, and all of the trees began, began to sing and utter a song. What song did they utter? Praise Hashem from the earth, sea giants, and all the watery depths. Leviathan. What is Leviathan? Da'at. If you take the, the D and the A and the Tav off of Da'at, you are left with the letters that spell Leviathan. These guys know exactly what they're doing. And the trees even know the verse. The fruit trees and all the cedar trees sang hallelujah. And an angel spoke from amidst the fire and said, you, Glenn, you see those two little words right there? Chain, chain. Yes, yes. It wasn't an illicit union. They did it correctly. Now, if you take from Aleph to Yud, the gematria is 55. Chain. If you take the next Hain, its gematria is 55. Aleph to Yud. Ten, the first 10 letters, the next 10 letters. Upper 10, Lower ten. The ten part suf, ten part suf. Hain hain. Yes, yes. It's all code. And the angel said, Who's this angel? <laughs> Metatron. This is certainly Masamir Kava. So he told him he couldn't teach him, but he taught him. Because they conceal the matter and then they reveal the matter. This is the way of the sages. It's beautiful. Rabbi uh, Rabban Yochanan ben Zakai stood up, kissed Rabbi Eleazar ben Arach on his head and said, Blessed is Hashem, God of Israel, who has given a son to our forefather Abraham. Who knows how to comprehend that delve into and expound upon Masa Merkava? There are those who will expound well, but do not practice it well. Those who practice it well, but do not expound well. Expound is the word zibug. Making the, making the correct union. Metatron is Masa Merkava, the Kisei Kavod that sits, the, the Metatron Hagodal, which is Adam. The throne of glory, which is union, sitting and surrounded, and he is surrounded by Hashmal, which is the angel Mikael, Michael. So think of Adam, which is in the image of God, which has no image, which is the Yechida, and this is Metatron. Well, so Adam is the Yechida, Metatron is the Haya. So this fire, this glow that it's given off is what's known as the Hashmal, which is the electricity, which is in Ezekiel's vision. And he saw the Hashmal, right? What is the Hashmal? Mikhail, Raphael, Uriel, Nuriel, all the, all the inner circle. And then that light is given off the seraphim. And that, so you have the orphim, the seraphim, the hyote, as it's going down. It's all just emanating out of yud heh If you zoom in, we can study the pieces. 
But if you zoom out, it's one gestalt. So always hold on to it loosely. Is it Adam? Yes. Is it Shekinah? Yeah. Is it Adonai? Yeah. Is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Boom, 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 boom. Metatron is the membrane. It's not a thing. All the aspects are functional steps of how it ascends and descends. As it says in Jacob, when he laid his head on the stone and the sulam, the ladder, and the angels were ascending and descending. Why does it say ascending first and descending second? Because ascending has no limit where descending has a bottom. How does the Rambam, Rambam's Peshat, right? How does he deal with Metatron? They say it's an, it is a, a part of active imagination, the ability to perceive through a medium. They describe it pretty well. The Zohar says, in the beginning, God created Elohim, which is Metatron. That's why Enoch walked with Elohim and Noah walked with Elohim. They are it. That's why it says, I walked myself. Remember? It's the female, the lesser, relative to the greater. The Benish High says, why double the term Hain Hain? Yes, yes. Because Havaya Adonai starts with the Yud and ends with the Yud. This is the method called Masa Mirkava. It means to interconnect. It starts with a Yud and ends with the Yud. From Allah to Yud is 55. These are the first 10 letters. It's like saying Yud, Yud. So, and it says, and they will all know my name. It doesn't say Yud, Hey, Vav, Hey. There it says Yud, Hey, Yud, Hey. Remember? Mm -hmm. And the Moloch said this, because it starts with him and ends with him. And the Torah is amazing, and the sages are amazing. <laughs> See y'all next week.